Yo, 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 what's good, world? You already know who it is, man. It's your boy, Gio. Back with another one, man. This stuff here is just too interesting with the Diddy stuff, man. This girl, Allie, well, this woman, Allie Carter. I think that's her name, yeah, Allie Carter. She's talking about all the kids' scenarios, the scenarios she's been in. I mean, it's just too much information. Like, I have to show y'all everything that's going on she's calling out names tyler perry oprah i mean she's calling out some big names uh that's part of this shindig that they have and she's mentioning about how they rent these people out and the kids as well and they basically you're like a test drive at a car dealership like she mentioned until she want to you know, until they want to rent you out, like an auction type thing, where they, you know, have the highest bidder, and it's crazy, man, like, you know, they talk, she talking about the tunnels, she talking about how people's coming after her, you know, she's, she's putting it all out there, you know, and she's saying everyone's on the tapes, like your boy Ross, um, they're allegedly saying this is all allegedly uh, entertainment purposes only too. So it's giving y'all what's already out. You know, they saying that Jay Z went to every single party. You know, Jason Lee he was putting it out on blast. I mean, he's not playing. You know, uh, it's 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 too much stuff that they got going on. It's too many people involved. You know, Allie Carter was talking about Will Smith. You know, just all of them. Rick Ross, I mean, Khaled, all the big names. Kevin Hart, that's why he left. You know, they, they talking about Lenny Kravitz, man. I'm like, man, you know, it's, it's, it's all the big people, man. All the big dogs and a lot of the small dogs because those are the ones that's getting brought in you know it's a lot of information i'm about to give y'all and i'm not about to spoil it i know y'all want to check the content out i know y'all don't want to see me but i just want to make my presence on here and just want to thank y'all once again you know for tuning in checking me out keeping tabs on me you know talking to me in the comments y'all better talk to me in the live like i mentioned i'm gonna have a live set i think it's friday or saturday so y'all check that out the live will be either this friday or saturday so y'all check that out and let me know um what y'all think and moving forward we'll, we'll work on different topics and things and go from there you know um let's do it man this is this is devastating information man you know one of the lawyers he said he got so much information that he would put out that would blow everybody's mind he got all the tapes he got so much footage he said he's putting it out and i think he's blackmailing him too because he's offering pay to keep the material so the big dogs, they probably going to be getting those tapes and paying him really well. So he won't bring that out, you know, and they just talking about the tunnels. They talking about, you know, the the oil, what's really in the oil. They saying that it was supposed to be liquid guyena or some stuff that's going to make you pass out and have memory loss and all types of things. You know, they saying that, you know, you can't drink. Well, you can't go in the party without drinking. If you if you can't drink, you can't get in the party. So you gotta take the the boom boom juice, you know. And it's just so many allegations, man. So much information that's done came out, you know, about Diddy. And I will say this one thing before I close shop. These rumors been going around for so long, and I've said this before, but nobody cared to think about that. They wanted to go to that party. They knew it was going to be some crazy off-the-wall stuff or some rules to abide by. They still wanted to go to these parties. They thought they wouldn't come up off of a bag. I'm going to meet some celebrity there. Or if I rock with Diddy, do whatever he say, I'm going to get that bag. Because if that was the case, those parties would have never even worked. 
it's, it, none of this stuff would have been put together. Don't get me wrong. Stuff been floating around, you know, since, you know, early 2000s or the 90s, or whatever, some weirdo stuff. But these people knew what was going on. So they, yeah, you could say they victims, but they went there. They wanted to be there. They, some of them, yeah, the ones that was forced and stuff like that, the SA, that's different. The traffickers, but that's different. But for the people that was free willed and they just went to that party and thought they would come up on the bag, didn't get that bag, now they're trying to come out. So, I mean, you put two and two together. I mean, it's, I mean, come on now. You can't just put it all completely on him and. It wasn't just him controlling it. It's to make the other executives. Yes, he's an executive, but his big dogs, his gatekeepers, how uh, Orlando Brown said, the gatekeepers, you know what I'm saying? That set the whole thing up and sponsor the stuff as well and sponsor him. So it ain't just him. That's why he blackmailed everybody. He said, if I'm going to take the rap, everybody's coming down with me, you know, and y'all willingly participated in it. Y'all wanted to have, um, the success and the entertainment world. So y'all was willing to do whatever. So now y'all being quiet. Y'all need to hold my man Diddy down. And I ain't going to say it's like my dude. I worship nothing like, no. Back in the day, we used to all look at Diddy, how he was doing his thing, man. And, you know, he's a, he's a big dog in the hip hop industry, man. And, you know, y'all just can't put all the blame on him. When y'all was attending, y'all was enjoying, everybody was having a good time. And when things didn't go certain people's ways, then y'all come forward. Like Cassie, yeah, she deserved that. Jaguar right, I could say a 50-50 because she could have left. Or she didn't get the bag she wanted to. I'm not saying what they did was right to her. Of course not. She have every you know right to voice her opinion. But for some of y'all, man... You know, they said Bow Wow said it ain't it ain't jumping out here no more. You know, without him. He missed the parties, he missed Diddy. I mean, he brought up with Diddy since he was just able to walk, you know, with uh Jermaine Dupri. So, you know, I'm gonna keep this short and simple, man. I, I know I done went a little longer than normal, but um yeah, man. Y'all gotta check this stuff out, man, and uh let me know what y'all think. Drop in the comments, man, hit that subscribe button, man. Appreciate all the love and support, man. Appreciate y'all getting this channel to where it's at now, man. I appreciate y'all, man. And we're going to keep going up. We're going to run it up, you know. So run them subscribes up, man, so we can go ahead and get hyped up and get everything jumping even quicker, man. Appreciate y'all, man. To the next one, I'm out. The indictment alleges that Combs abused and exploited women and other people for years and in a variety of ways. As alleged, Combs used force, threats of force, and coercion to cause victims to engage in extended sexual performances with male commercial sex workers, some of whom he transported or caused to be transported over state lines. Combs allegedly planned and controlled the sex performances, which he called freak-offs and he often electronically recorded them. The freak off sometimes lasted days at a time, involved multiple commercial sex workers, and often involved a variety of narcotics, and he subjected victims to physical, emotional, and verbal abuse so that they would participate in the freak offs, and that Combs hit, kicked, threw objects at, and dragged victims, at times by their hair. On one occasion in March of 2016, that conduct was captured on video and later reported in the media. The police were working with you on this case. You wanted to get the report. We talked about this. You said things were going smoothly, but now it's not. So when did that change? Last night, actually, I got an email from them, uh, the county, not the city police, that then said I needed a subpoena to get the records, which I think we all know about Freedom of Information Act which requires a public information be given freely. That's why it's a federal law.
the FBI recently made a discovery implicating Oprah Winfrey in connection to Diddy's ongoing legal troubles, which sent shockwaves throughout Hollywood. The revelation suggests that Winfrey, long considered an untouchable figure due to her vast influence and power, has been linked to Diddy's alleged crimes, such as trafficking and exploitation. So I've never experienced in any situation where I have been told I needed a subpoena to get public information. I was floored, I was shocked, and it was apparent to me that some type of cover-up is going on. The Orenda police are in violation of federal law, and I will make sure if they want to be the next face in a lawsuit, they can be the next. The PBD podcast has delved into the explosive revelations surrounding Diddy's recent arrest and the tapes that may contain evidence of his involvement in shocking criminal activities. As federal investigations intensify, sources reveal that the tapes potentially implicate more high-profile individuals beyond Diddy. This discussion has sparked significant concern in Hollywood, as many wonder how deep the misconduct runs and how many other powerful figures might be exposed. The podcast podcast emphasizes the gravity of the situation, hinting that these tapes could shake the foundations of the music and entertainment industries. Could these tapes bring down other big names in Hollywood? Diddy's list of accomplices to be revealed in a new lawsuit, okay, in a new lawsuit. So in this story, this lawyer comes out and just drops the bomb on everybody. Tony, Tony, Tony Busby revealed that a list of Sean Diddy Combs Alleged accomplices will be released in a new wave of lawsuits involving 120 victims. He promised the names will shock you. The day will come when we will name names other than Sean Combs. And there are a lot of names, he emphasized. We're going to make damn sure, damn sure that we're right before we do that. The lawsuit covering incidents dating back to 1991 involving a legend of sexual abuse many related to Combs. Attorney Tony Bosby, representing the victims, revealed during a press conference that some of the youngest victims in the Diddy case were just nine years old. These allegations are part of a larger scandal involving over 120 accusers, both male and I was one of the kids that was one of the party favors. And a party favors means that you're set on top of a table and you're used as a toy for anybody who comes across the table or who wants to party at a certain time of night when the music stops and then the DJ starts flashing all these lights and they close the doors and then everybody turns into like a frenzy and starts going into a crazed animal-like demonic state and you have no idea what's going on and yes there was a time where i was just like completely don't give a shit because it happened and i was the type of kid that thought that you know you're in the presence of royalty and they make it seem like you're in the presence of hollywood so you should be you should be honored and you should be appreciating that you're there and i was that person i totally acted like that i was like oh it's fine i have been screaming underwater since I was three months old. Um, I went into foster care at 13, 14. I, um, we tried to do a case against Riverside County Child Protective Services because Riverside County, do you hear me? Riverside County Child Protective Services was involved in my trafficking. I never thought that we would see the day where Diddy would get arrested. And I told you guys in that Maria Z interview in 2021 that no one tells on Diddy. P. Diddy. All right? Just the same way nobody tells on Denzel Washington. We tried to back up. We've tried to tell you everything that we can. And now we have people messaging us, investigators, people that want to talk now, when now it's because it's trending. We're still not on the subject of the kids. All the adults are covering their asses. All the adults are, I left at a certain time, yet you knew children were there. You knew these parties were not okay. They weren't freak offs. They were satanic ritual orgies. And one of those children were me. Bullshit. You see all the people running? 
They're ducking and hiding because everybody knows that there was children there. But we're still not talking about the kids yet. When are we going to talk about the kids? Everybody's demanding something from the victims. Why aren't you demanding it from the news? You know he's about to turn into another Epstein, and then the list follows, and it circles back into a web. So why isn't anybody demanding any information on the kids? Do you think that thousands of bottles worth of baby oil was for thousands of who? $65,000 worth of hot dogs and pizza was for who? Trafficking over the border was for who? Child Protective Services is your supplier. Is anybody going to talk about that? Everybody that you love, you don't live in the world you think you do. Everybody that you think is not guilty is about to show you who they really are. I've been screaming for years. So now if you see me over here trying to live a normal life and tying up loose ends as justice, mind your fucking business or don't. We were followed the night that Diddy was arrested. I left a place that I was in, minding my own business, finally trying to stop for a second and get my life back. And you know what? I'm not even upset about that. I'm upset about the fact that I have to walk back into this place and I have to tell you all goodbye. So if you know who I am and you know me as justice, you know I'm about to walk into this building and tell you I got to go. Nobody ever thinks about the victims. Nobody. We're not talking about the victims that are still going through the shit right now with other people who are running to cover their ass and deleting their social medias. Pink, Megan Fox, Tyra Banks, Steve Harvey. We got legal evidence to drop. I just don't know what's the point. Yeah. I was at a Diddy party. I was one of the party favors. But I told you, nobody tells on Diddy. Maria Z, I did that interview in 2021. Seven months ago. We made sure, I already knew, <laughs> that Diddy and Oprah is about to get arrested. I already knew that seven, eight months ago. Because everybody was so busy talking bouncing to their music. Didn't I tell you, music is a diary. Are you now figuring that out? They're telling you what they did. The music, they're tell it's telling you what they did. The comedy and the art is a reflection of life. I got a reflection of life for you. Ooh, and if you're if you're trying to come towards me right now thinking that hey, maybe she'll testify testify against what? I don't trust none of you all. Testify against <laughs> who? <clears throat> Testify against the same corrupt justice system that's not doing a damn thing for anybody? Let's be clear. You federal prosecutors, you have a video surveillance from Diddy's, Diddy's house from back from 2008. Look in that 2008, 2010 span. You'll find her video there. You want to send it? <clears throat> send it over? She'll say, yeah, that's me. Then you can do what you can do, but otherwise we're not messing with you. I don't trust none of y'all. My bones will never be the same. My heart will never be the same. My soul will never be the same, but I'm still sitting here. So I'll still continue to try to do what I can do. To be a voice for my friends that are no longer here and for the kids who don't have a voice right now while everybody is too busy running towards the adults. Everybody no, not that black man. No, that can't be true. No, he can't be having satanic rituals. No, there's no way. Yeah, there is. And now you see. So now what you gonna do about it? Those parties involve children. The media is making it sound they like they don't it just was involve adults. children. They involve animals. The adults who are swearing up and down, I left at one o'clock in the morning. You shouldn't have been there in the first place. You You're shouldn't disgusting. have been there. And on top of that, if and you knew <clears throat> that there were children coming in after a certain hour. Why the hell didn't you say anything until right now? Coward. All these people, I knew, I knew, I knew he was crazy. So you guilty. I told you everybody guilty. Why? Cause why? You covered your ass. Denzel, you a damn liar. Lecrae, you a damn liar. Anytime I speak about Diddy, I see so many pages posted.
when I speak about Drake Kendrick, so many people post it. When I speak about Jay-Z, it's radio silent. No, I could say the wildest thing about Jay-Z right now, not one person will post it. And I've looked at it, I was like, hmm, that's interesting. But then it's not that interesting because everybody who don't post it, I, I see their direct ties to Jay-Z, to Rockefeller, to a Jay-Z owned company, to Rock Nation, and I get it. So part of acquiring power and wealth is insulating yourself by giving, by controlling the people that have voices. And I think Jay-Z's done a great job of that. I'm not saying he's necessarily telling them what to do or what not to do, but he made sure he put some very powerful people that you might call gatekeepers or people with voices in powerful positions. They're not, it wouldn't be in their best interest to talk about it. Why did you go and buy them all off, Curtis? Wait, so uh, you did some, you did a PSA on Curtis about him and Soldier Boy yeah. on a cover of, yeah. a, you know, you, 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 you kind of, you kind of poking the bear there. I'm not poking a bear. I'm saying that he's a stone. And I've spoken to two men he's lived in sales with, who you had sex with, Curtis. No, I'm not saying allegedly. You're and you know it. Oh, okay. Here's the thing. You can't sue someone that has no money. Yeah. Okay. Like Jaguar Wright lives in a car. Last I checked. I remember she was arrested for not returning a U-Haul truck a few oh. months ago. Right. So you have someone that has no money. So you sue them. You spend three, 500,000 on court fees. You go to court. You win because the person probably won't even show up. And then you get a million dollar judgment. I think suing to make it look like she's telling the truth. Well, regardless of truth or false or whatever, you sue somebody, you win, you can't collect. Yeah, so now saying. you spent half a million dollars and a bunch of time for nothing. Yeah. But a platform like Pierce Morgan, you can't sue. Yeah, because that's major. He's got money. Yeah. So what, you know, Jay and Beyonce did, which I think was the right thing to do, is they ignored Jaguar Wright and went after the platform. You know, which is similar to what, like, Cardi B did with Tasha K. Brand new, literally, it's just a couple of hours ago in California. We have told you about this accuser before. She says she was raped by P. Diddy at a private home in the Bay Area in 2018. Uh, she says that she doesn't believe the police ever investigated her reports. Multiple agencies, not just one, three. But now we are hearing so much more detail and actually a level of detail almost unmatched in a lot of complaints that I've read through. I'm actually going to read um, a lot of the details in just a moment and I'm going to do it verbatim. And so I need to give you a massive flashing red warning here. <clears throat> what I'm about to say is quite disturbing. There's a lot of like uncomfortable language. Um, and uh, if you are triggered or upset by sex assaults and violent assaults, etc., then this is definitely not the show for you tonight. The accuser is named Ashley Parham, and she has agreed to allow her name to be made public. Let's be real clear about that. She is going public with her name. She says that in February of 2018, she met a man named Shane Pierce at a bar, and that Shane FaceTimed Diddy outside on the sidewalk, apparently trying to impress her. But Ashley Parham says that she told both Shane and Diddy on FaceTime that she wasn't impressed. And this is important. She says she believed uh, that Diddy had something to do with the murder of Tupac Shakur and said as much. Allegedly, Diddy warned her that she would pay for saying something like that. Oh. So let's just fast forward now to a month later, where she says this guy Shane invited her to come to his apartment. And the lawsuit says, quote, Plaintiff and defendant Shane then began to watch a movie and defendant Shane offered her a glass of water, which he retrieved and brought back to the plaintiff. Uh, a few minutes later, um, Ashley Parham says that P. Diddy showed up with an entourage, including his top aide, Christina Corum, an unnamed woman who is not a defendant in the suit, and three unnamed men, one of whom she says was Diddy's driver, and Parham says that that driver waited outside uh, throughout the whole of what I'm about to tell you. Uh, Parham says that Diddy was antagonistic from the start and that he put a knife to her face. And now this is where I start reading directly from the complaint. Uh, 
Defendant Shane then partially undressed plaintiff, and then Defendant Diddy removed the remainder of plaintiff's clothing, removing the knife from her face, and then retrieved a bottle of liquid from a large fanny pack. Defendant Diddy then squirted a bottle of liquid on plaintiff, which placed her in fear that she was being squirted with a chemical substance like acid. Plaintiff soon realized the substance was an oil slash lubricant. Plaintiff was squirted with this liquid substance all over the entirety of her naked body. Defendant KK was then told by Defendant Diddy to insert what looked like a syringe from sterile packaging into plaintiff's vagina. Defendant KK did as told, and then told Defendant Diddy that she was unable to use the IUD because it had prematurely been released from its packaging, and an IUD is a birth control device. Defendant Diddy, upset by this, took the so-called syringe from Defendant KK and tried inserting it into plaintiff's vagina instead. Defendant KK and Diddy began to argue as Defendant KK continued to advise Defendant Diddy that since the IUD had been prematurely released from its packaging, there was no way they could insert it into plaintiff's vagina effectively. After some time, Defendant Diddy heeded the advice of Defendant KK and removed the syringe from plaintiff's vagina and handed it to Defendant KK. Defendants KK and Jane Doe then exited Defendant Shane's residence, leaving the plaintiff alone with Defendants Diddy, Shane, and Doe's number one and two. Defendant Diddy then picked up a television remote that was near to plaintiff and violently inserted it into plaintiff's vagina. Defendant Diddy, while violently raping plaintiff with a television remote, told plaintiff that her life was in his hands and that if he wanted, he could, quote, take her and she would never be seen again. Plaintiff began hysterically crying from the threats by Diddy along with the pain of being violently vaginally raped by Defendant Diddy with the television remote, as well as lingering pain from the ordeal with the IUD syringe insertion. Defendant Diddy then instructed Defendant Shane to turn plaintiff on her stomach, seemingly tired of hearing plaintiff's blood-curdling cries. Defendant Shane then grabbed plaintiff by her abdomen and hips and turned plaintiff on her stomach. Defendant Diddy then instructed Defendant Shane to put a pillow over her head because he didn't want to see her face or hear her cries and instructed Defendant Shane to anally rape plaintiff. Defendant Shane did as he was told by Defendant Diddy and began to anally rape plaintiff. Defendant Diddy then violently raped plaintiff anally after Defendant Shane. Defendant Doe No. 2 then joined Defendants Diddy and Shane taking a turn anally raping plaintiff. Immediately after Defendant No. 2 raped plaintiff, he exited Defendant Shane's residence. Defendant Diddy then instructed Defendant Doe No. 1 to also rape plaintiff. Instead of immediately raping plaintiff, Defendant Doe No. 1 doused plaintiff with more oil slash lubricant and then jumped on top of plaintiff's naked and oiled body, treating it like a slip and slide and knocking the wind out of plaintiff due to his enormous size. Defendant Doe No. 1 then caught himself from sliding over plaintiff's oiled body and off the bed and then began raping plaintiff vaginally. While Defendant No. 1 was raping plaintiff, Defendant Diddy sat in a chair near the bed and began masturbating while recording plaintiff's rape by Defendant Doe No. 1. Another party's phone fell on the bed near plaintiff. Plaintiff then attempted to grab the phone but it slipped out of her hand and onto the floor due to the oil slash lubricant that had been doused all over her person by Defendants Diddy and Doe No. 1. Defendant Diddy began laughing at plaintiff's attempt to grab the phone. Throughout this violent gangbang style rape, Defendant Diddy made constant belittling remarks to plaintiff including that he quote, owned her now. Plaintiff's body was becoming more and more limp over the course of the violent rape until eventually she had no control over her body nor could she move her body. When Defendant Doe No. 1 finished raping plaintiff, Defendant KK entered the room to examine the condition of plaintiff who was barely able to move or control her bodily functions. Defendant KK 
examined plaintiff to see if she needed assistance and was about to give plaintiff an IV fluid. Plaintiff cannot be certain if she did or did not receive such intravenous intervention. Defendant KK then opened a different bag, different than the one that Diddy removed the oil from, where plaintiffs observed several medicine bottles, IV fluid bags, and other unidentical powder-like drugs. Defendant KK then removed a pill from one of the medicine bottles and gave it to Defendant Diddy. Defendant Diddy then inserted the pill into plaintiff's mouth and down her throat to where plaintiff had no choice but to ingest the unknown pill. Defendants Diddy, Shane, KK, and Doe No. 1 then exited the residence to the backyard where they smoked marijuana and cigarettes. Plaintiff remained in an almost lifeless state in Defendant Shane's bedroom until she finally regained her bodily function. Plaintiff then began looking for her clothes and her purse that contained her car keys and cell phone but could not discover them in the room or anywhere in the apartment. Plaintiff was only able to find a t-shirt on the floor which she put on to cover her naked body. Plaintiff also observed a black condom wrapper on the floor of the bedroom which she assumed was used by one of the defendants, most likely Defendant Diddy, during the rape. Plaintiff then grabbed a knife from the kitchen and headed to the backyard where defendants were smoking as that was the only way to exit the premises onto the street. Plaintiff concealed the knife on her left side. They lead to amusement parks, they lead to hospitals, cemeteries, schools, celebrity homes. They lead everywhere. Part 7. The FBI's investigation into the tunnels of the Diddy's mansion is finally coming to a close and they've found more shocking new content. As I mentioned in a previously posted video, the FBI found access to Michael Jackson's basement in the Diddy's tunnels and also found a large amount of adult toys and baby oil in one of the secret rooms. But did you think that was the end of it? When the FBI temporarily left the Diddy mansion, a drone captured a suspicious figure over the mansion, zooming in. You can see that it's an old man with black hair and pale skin who appeared in the backyard for only three short minutes before walking back into the basement. Combined with previous clues, many people speculate that this may be Michael Jackson himself because ever since Michael Jackson's funeral, his coffin has never been opened, so people have been questioning his death. Then again, why did he want to hide him? In the FBI's interrogation, Diddy acted very uneasy and claimed to have no knowledge of this. The FBI had no choice but to launch a deeper investigation into the mansion. This time, they are in the other side of the tunnel of the mansion, found another hidden passageway, led by a SWAT team. The FBI discovers a big, scary secret. You can't imagine what they saw. Follow me and you'll see Part 8. Maximum Alert Hurricane Milton devastated Dee Dee's mansion, and the FBI made a discovery that left everyone in shock among the debris. While the cleanup crew was working, something unbelievable surfaced. An old suitcase buried deep in the property, filled with disturbing documents and photos that now put the wrapper under suspicion. According to sources close to the investigation, the content of these photos is extremely troubling, revealing scenes no one would ever expect to associate with such a well-known figure. The police acted quickly, sealing off the area, and initiating a thorough analysis to understand the gravity of what was found. What these photos suggest could shake the entertainment industry and potentially compromise Dee Dee's image forever. So far, the rapper remains completely silent, which only intensifies the speculation. Who else could be involved? What exactly do these photos show? I've had access to confidential information, and what has been discovered is much more impactful than one might imagine. To see the continuation of this bizarre story, follow my profile and comment part 2. Now damn man, Tia Cap recently sat down with Tasha K on an interview and she has some words to say about Rick Ross and Mr. Diddy. Claiming that Rick Ross said that he was waiting for Diddy to get locked up so he can buy all of his ish. Come on man. Get him out of here. So Rick Ross talking shit about Diddy. I should go to my DM. Ooh, I want my phone right now. Bring her phone. Bring her phone. I'm going to go to my DMs because you know he blocked me, but I still could go to all this stuff. I screenshot it. Girl, how about he was saying, oh, I can't wait to let me lock that up. I'm going to buy his shit. <laughs> I'm going to show you all the messages we be talking about all his <laughs> He said he can't wait till they lock yeah, he Diddy up. locked up so he could buy his house. That's real 
good too, Faith. Great. Nah, yo, y'all think that Tia Kemp is making this stuff up just to get some clout? Or do y'all really think that Rick Ross was out here waiting for Diddy to go down so he could buy some of his stuff out? Because from what I've seen, Diddy and Rick Ross were buddy buddies, man. I mean, Diddy even produced one of Rick Ross's albums. Like, they were homies, man. Come on, man. Get him out of here! Y'all, the feds did not come to play with Diddy and his associates because they just named Mary J. Blige as one of Diddy's freak-off associates, and they're claiming that she allegedly helped Diddy set other women up and forced them into freak-offs. It seems like Diddy's trial is happening anytime soon because the feds are starting to name some of his alleged associates, and things are starting to heat up big time. Mary J. Blige and Diddy have had this weird relationship for a long time, and it looks like we finally know the real reason behind this weird relationship. But get this, the streets are now saying that she allegedly helped helped Diddy pimp out Aaliyah to Jay-Z and that she knows more about Aaliyah's death than we thought. Y'all, the receipts here are very spicy because the feds pulled through with all the receipts to back up these wild claims. So it's becoming clearer and clearer day by day that Diddy, aka the Diddler now, is watching his circle get smaller by the minute and honestly his public image is crumbling just as fast. Things are looking rough because folks who used to be his ride or die are jumping ship left and right because nobody wants to go down with him for this mess. Now, even Mary J. Blige has tried to dip out. But Mary leaving Diddy isn't exactly shocking, but the speed at which she distanced her- Throughout the ages of the victims when the conduct occurred, it's shocking. Her youngest victim at the time of the occurrence is, was nine years old. We have an individual who was 14 years old. We have one who was 15. 25 of the 120 individuals who are plaintiffs in these cases were minors at the time of the acts complained of. The time frame of the acts complained of is very wide. The conduct at issue spans from the years 1991 all the way till this year, 2024. If you wonder why there are so many alleged victims, that's your answer. We're talking about more than 25 years of this type of conduct. And since Lil Jerome reportedly signed his contract with Diddy when he was around nine, some are wondering if he's one of the accusers suing Diddy. But regardless of that, what we need to talk about is the heartbreaking and horrifying details of Lil Jerome's life. According to Mark Curry, Diddy did something to Lil Jerome that was so brutal that it drove him crazy. And Lil Jerome himself admitted that he suffered a nervous breakdown when he was just 14. This story is truly disturbing, but it deserves to be told because there might be many other victims out there who have been silenced and forgotten just like Jerome Childers. He went out to the street speaking in tongues. So you'd be like, not only is he, spe is he out in the street neck, he's speaking in tongues. What? I mean, something else got a hold of this man. Deal with the devil. Lil Jerome was born Stanley. Jerome Childers in Akron, Ohio. He showed interest in singing at a young age and started performing with his sister's band. Jerome's sister's band recorded some demos with a local Ohio musician who happened to have connections with Jodeci. Jodeci was signed to Uptown Records where Diddy worked as an intern before moving up the ranks to talent manager. So this musician who recorded with Jerome's sister passed the demo records to some of his friends in New York and the demos eventually reached Diddy. Diddy was then shown a videotape of Jerome performing, and he immediately arranged for Jerome and his parents and sister to fly to New York. That's where Jerome auditioned in front of Diddy, and Diddy was so impressed that he signed him on the spot. The last freak-off tape that just got sold on the dark net, which I know because I monitor, went for 500 million. It had multiple stars in it. Nicki Minaj, Rihanna, Chris Brown, Justin Bieber, Drake. It was a really interesting night in Calabasas and he just sold that footage. And with all these new revelations, Jaguar Wright is also back in the spotlight. She recently dropped yet another bombshell during an interview. She claimed that Diddy allegedly sold a freak off party video on the dark web for a staggering five male and female with claims of physical misconduct, trafficking and manipulation spanning decades. The mistreatment allegedly occurred during events like auditions at Bad Boy Records, where minors were promised record deals in exchange for silence. This revelation has horrified the public and raised serious concerns about the unchecked power wielded by Diddy and his associates in the industry. We now represent 120 individuals who intend to bring civil claims in civil court against Sean Diddy Combs. I don't want to focus on the ages of these victims. When you talk about the ages of the victims when the conduct occurred, it's shocking. Her youngest victim at the time of the occurrence was nine years old. 
We have an individual who was 14 years old. We have one who was 15. 25 of the 120 individuals who are plaintiffs in these cases were minors at the time of the acts complained of. The time frame of the acts complained of is very wide. The conduct at issue spans from the years 1991 all the way till this year, 2024. If you wonder why there are so many alleged victims, that's your answer. We're talking about more than 25 years of this type of conduct. For years, many have feared Oprah Winfrey's overwhelming influence in Hollywood. Her reach extends far beyond her talk show, with many insiders claiming that she holds the power to make or break careers. This fear has led to a culture of silence around her, with few daring to speak out. Are canceling their interviews because they don't want to get blacklisted by Oprah? Who wants to be on the wrong side of Oprah in Hollywood? Who wants to be on the wrong side of Tyler Perry in Hollywood. Who wants to be on the wrong side of Steve Harvey in Hollywood? And as a result of that, now, amid the growing scrutiny surrounding Diddy, there is speculation that Oprah's role in the industry could come under closer examination. Allegations have circulated for years, but her power has largely shielded her from facing any serious legal consequences. A spiritual healer who believed he could channel the spirits of doctors and saints, and he would perform surgeries on people with his bare hands and scissors. Not to mention, John of God also literally essayed hundreds of different young girls and women ranging from the ages of 9 to 67 and some of his victims included his own daughter and her daughter his granddaughter and he was also running a ring selling newborns to childless couples for fifty thousand dollars all while being a spiritual healer to multiple different celebrities hollywood has long been associated with scandals and exploitation often involving its biggest names diddy's case is only the latest in a string of allegations against powerful figures who have allegedly used their positions they were dressed up like little harold juku barbies like what little people okay we're not gonna say what type of little people but like a fetish and i'm looking like what are they doing here like dressed up little um red lipstick like they weren't supposed to be there but i'm just looking like maybe it's some type of production going on but why would they be at this party at seven o'clock in the morning with grown people like why why would they be here so so one of his sons i'm not going to tell you which one but it was like recruiting like whoever they wanted to go inside the house because the back the the freak off is inside the house and in the backyard. I'm seeing stuff that you see on the movies. I'm, this corner, this got going on. This corner, they over here doing this. This corner, they over there having sex. This corner, I'm just gonna say, cause I don't know what I can say cause I'm not trying to be incriminating myself. P. Diddy was doing all that. And like I said, I don't judge because I've been around people doing cocaine, and, but these hard drugs that they was doing and just, I ain't gonna lie, it was orgies and stuff going on. So all of this stuff going on, I'm like, why is people doing stuff all in the open? Like, What if I told you it gets worse? This dude claims to be in possession of some of the Diddy tapes. And he says that some of them are so disturbing that if he put them out, the entire music industry would crumble. Take a look at this. I showed one of these tapes. So I'm telling you right now, the whole music industry and Hollywood, it would just grind down like this. They're all going to start pointing at each other like this, and it's going to be bad. We've already set it up. We have multiple attorneys. We know how to do it. It's not my first rodeo. I solved the greatest murder case in history. Three of them. I know how to do it. We're going to do it, but just going to come in pieces. And there's also ways we can, let's say, not censor it, but we can, we can kind of soften it. My main takeaway from that clip is the fact that they're already prepared to bring everybody down. The fact that everything is already set up. It's not like they're out here chasing people or trying to figure things out. This is all ready to go. I just think the information might be so shocking that they have to be careful with the public. Lawyers for Sean Diddy Combs are asking a judge to force prosecutors to disclose the names of his accusers in his sex trafficking case. They're arguing the hip-hop music star needs to know the identities of his alleged victims so that he can prepare adequately for trial. The request to identify accusers comes after six new lawsuits were filed against Combs anonymously. They are a part of what prosecutors say is a group of more than 100 accusers who are in the process of taking legal action against Combs. Combs had pleaded not guilty.
How does that do? That I'm gay now. Here, fuck me in the ass now. So there's rumors going around that Tupac actually exposed Diddy a long time ago. The interview in question is the interview that Tupac did with Angie Martinez. Now, initially, people said that Angie Martinez didn't put the interview out because she didn't want to spark up more beef between the East Coast and the West Coast. That is kind of true, but that's not necessarily the full truth. Tupac said a whole lot in this interview, a whole lot. And apparently, in this interview, Tupac exposed who Diddy really was. And y'all know what I mean by that. So you know what Diddy did, as he does most of the time? It's been said that he paid Angie Martinez to keep that interview in the vault. If this is true, which I would not be surprised if it was because Tupac was getting a lot of slander when he was in jail. I wouldn't be surprised if he came out of jail and was trying to deliver the same type of damage to Diddy and Biggie and all of them. It means with Diddy going to jail and Pac not being here no more, I think it's time to release that interview, bruh. Biggie's gone, Pac is gone. It's time to release that interview, bruh. Nobody's gonna get hurt now. What if the entertainment industry is nothing but a cover mm. for a worldwide sex ring? Cause we was talking about this uh, the other day and I asked you, what is the music industry? I said, "How? what is the birthplace of it? And you told me how it started with the Italians and the Jews. And the Jews, yeah. Uh, can you just get, for people who don't know, like, because when I've always thought black people started music, just me. Well, <laughs> the thing is, is we did. We were the culture. The Jews and the Italians monetized it. And started setting prices. Between Diddy and Epstein, there's, there's, there's probably several thousand hours of footage here. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of weird that the people on those videos are lecturing the rest of us about our moral failings, isn't it? Yeah, it's weird. What is that? Well, I mean, part of how they deflect attention from themselves is by you know, criticizing the morals of others. Yes. It's sort of like a preemptive moral strike. Those who are saying Trump is a threat to democracy are themselves actually the threat to democracy. It feels like we're getting to a place where the rest of us know too much. Like, what happens next now that we know all this? The kidnapper's shown us his face. Like, what happens? Well, I think if, uh, if Trump wins, we can do some house cleaning and shed light on things. <laughs>